Hello, well, sitting here on the porch, taking a little break. I've been working on the house. We're still hoping to move in pretty soon, but you know, it's just a lot of little stuff to do. And while I was sitting here, I was reading through the scriptures and I was reading in 2 Samuel about King David and his son Absalom. And a few things occurred to me. You know, Absalom, he was good looking. The Bible says there was no blemish on him from head to toe. Lots of long, beautiful hair. People loved him. They thought he was the coolest thing in the world. And he saw his dad do some bad things, and he kind of got an attitude about King David. And then he went out and did something terrible and killed his brother, actually. Long story as to why. But basically, he took matters into his own hands, got revenge on his brother. And, of course, that grieved their father because, you know, he loved both sons. I can't imagine such a horrible thing. You love your two children and one kills the other. Adam and Eve went through that with Cain and Abel. But anyway, his father's grieved, and he doesn't let Absalom see his face for quite a while. So Absalom gets an attitude. He starts campaigning against his father. He starts collecting chariots and stuff and people. He starts just sowing little seeds of, of uh, discord there about his father. You know, people would come to present their case to King David to, uh, to judge over. And he'd call him aside and he'd say, you know, if I were the one seeing your case, you know, if it were up to me, I, I could see where you've got a case and I'd rule in your favor. So he was winning friends and influencing people. And then the day he decided that uh, it was time for his old dad to go, he decided he'd take over. And if you remember the story, it didn't go well for him. And the sad part is, and, and the interesting thing, as I'm looking at this story, even before he killed his brother, when he's plotting to do it, when he's plotting to dishonor his father and take over and kill his father, I suppose, and take everything he had, nobody, nobody stepped up and said, hey, Absalom, this ain't right. You need to think about this. That's your brother. Or, hey, Absalom, that's your father. Now, sometimes there's somebody, and they're popular, they're good-looking, and you think they're cool, and, you know, you don't want to go against them. You want to think that everything they say and do is good. And if you say nothing, then in their mind, they're doing, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing if nobody ever corrects them, says anything to them. You know, the scripture talks about watchers, and it says, you know, if you're watching, you see the enemy coming, and you don't say anything, and the people all perish, hey, their blood's on your hands. And at the same time, if you warn the people, and they listen, then they're saved. If they don't listen, and they don't take heed to the warning that the enemy's coming, and they're slayed by the enemy, then hey, you're, you're clear, because you did warn them. So the thing is, we have a responsibility, at least to warn people. Now I know it's a great risk. They might turn on us. They might not appreciate it. They might not receive it. They might cut off your friendship. They might not listen to you, but at least I think we have to say something, even at risk of them getting mad, because as I said, it didn't turn out well for Absalom after all. Maybe it would have turned out different if somebody there that he trusted and loved perhaps and that he knew loved him would have stepped up and said, Absalom, this isn't right just had the courage to speak up and say, Absalom, you, you, you got to reconsider this. It won't go well for you. Maybe he'll listen. Maybe not, but hey, nobody said anything. Nobody had the courage and it didn't go well for him. Just something to think about. God bless you.